cafe anyway. Hello there. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's FFF episode 2859, 2859. Mike Matthews here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Mike's Daily Podcast. The land of a Meritopica, the last place on earth. It's Mike Matthews. What are we doing? We're singing, we're singing, we're singing, we're singing, we're singing, and we're moving. Because we're doing a hit some topics and talk about things in the land of Meritopica. This is the fourth verse in my song, so it's over. Uh, that's it for today. Best lyricist Mike's Daily Podcast that ever existed. So, you know you're getting older when a Mike's recliner Daily and a heating pad podcast. is your idea of a hot day. Yeah. Yeah, hot date. My wife asked if she could have a little peace and quiet while she cooked dinner. So I took the battery out of the smoke alarm. (laughs) When I was a kid, when we played spin the bottle, if they didn't want to kiss you, they'd have to give you a quarter. By the time I was 12, I owned my own home. (laughs) Okay. Thank you, Winky Wanover. Send those to me. She was a friend of my mom's my late mom and I still get these emails sent to me they used to be sent to her now they're sent to me because I'm such a nerd and I appreciate Winky and I know it must be hot and crazy over there in Florida it's hot and crazy over here you know what it is also over here it's nerdy whether you want to learn about magic like Harry Potter or be a chess champion like Beth Harmon on the Queen's Gambit. I don't I have no idea what that is. We found the best cities for nerdy Americans. Yes, the wonderful people that have a lot of old people use them called Solitaire Bliss. They analyze businesses on Google and Meetup.com because that's... Do people still go to Meetup.com? Heck, I even downloaded a Meetup app on my phone for a while because I was lonely. That was eons ago. A decade ago. And here's today's podcast picture. That qualifies as an eon. Podcast picture is going to be of the wonderful trip my lovely lady friend and I did. So now we're no longer lonely because we're with each other and we're happy. And we went on a nice little mic excursion up into Richmond and Berkeley and all that area there over the weekend, it was fun. And I got some cool pictures. See at mikesdailypodcast.com. Here are the most nerdy, friendly, nerd friendly cities in America. Let's see. The number eight. Well, we don't care about the other ones, but we want to know what number eight is because it's San Francisco. The late great Basil the Boxer went to San Francisco once. We went to, it was a Fort Funston. It's so fun. It's got Funston in its name. And we walked around with uh, all the dogs running around off leash in the beautiful ocean. It was great. Except this German shepherd attacked him and bit his jowls. That wasn't very cool. But San Francisco ranks number eight. San Francisco is the best city for maker spaces. There are seven within the city limits. San Francisco also had the most rail museums. Computer clubs Model shops And a Space history museum What is a maker space? Hmm I wonder if Copilot can tell me Let's see A maker space is a collaborative Workspace where people of all ages Can create, learn, and explore Using a variety of tools These spaces exist in schools, libraries, and other public or private facilities. Okay. Thank you, Bing Co-Pilot to whatever. Oh, gosh. Is that why you're bald, Mike? It is. (laughs) It is because of anything we just discussed. That's right. Science museums, too, are also what makes San Francisco nerdy. The most popular nerdy meetup event in San Francisco is book clubs. There are 84 book clubs taking place in the next three months. And that all from SolitaireBliss.com They have articles like this Because people like to waste time and read things like that Oh, Chicago, Las Vegas, and Houston are at, at number one 
and they say there are a lot of bookstores there. There's the most hacking, coding, and programming events going on. Oh, Oakland, California has the most nerdy meetups, is what it says here. Interesting. Thank you, Solitaire Bliss. For all those people that like to play things, video, danger, Will Robinson, danger. play games with cards, is what I'm trying to say. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. That sounds like it would take all the time in the world that you have. So, California State Controller Malia M. Cohen issued the following statement in response to Governor Gavin Newsom signing the 2024 2025 budget. You know, before he goes off to become our president. The Budget Act, when I say that, there are so many conservatives that just lost their bleep just now. Their bleep is gone. They've lost it. They don't know where the bleep went. The Budget Act of 2024 is a balanced budget that closes a $45 billion shortfall, she says. I am cautiously optimistic that it will continue to provide core programs and services to most Californians. Do you like the way that I'm talking to you right now? It's almost at vocal fry level. However... Its impact on economically disadvantaged communities is yet to be determined. As the state's chief fiscal officer, and probably running for governor at some point, I commend Governor Newsom and the legislature for including tools in this budget that would further protect the fiscal integrity of the budget in future years. Speaking of future years, so let's just say, for example, that Biden loses the election, which he will. That is going to mean... Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. Mr. Microphone will run for president. He's going to lose too. But it will mean Kamala Harris will try and run in 2028, probably. And she's going to lose, which will make her run for governor in... Well, I think we probably have a gov- governoral... Governoral? A governor election. Guven- gubernatorial. <laughs> Something like that uh, Going on around 2030 Maybe 2032 So she'll run for governor and she'll win That's my prediction yeah, I called it here first If we go inside a cafe anyway We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcast Ali, The last place on earth In the land of Ameritopica So I just thought That that would be an interesting thing To bring up I'm going to go now to the whiny white man wine list Which as you know One of the things that Biden Succeeded at in the uh, uh, the, the debate The debate Four. was okay. Saying okay. anyway, And at the very end of the debate Was when he got better apparently And also At some point during the debate He called Trump a whiner Which is absolutely true And let's see The GOP recently halted efforts by Democrats to ban bump stocks on guns. NBC says Senate Democrats sought to pass legislation banning bump stocks for firearms after the Supreme Court overruled a previous ban. That happened recently as well. But a single Republican objected on behalf of his party, effectively stalling the bill. Backed by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Martin Hendrich, They sought unanimous consent to pass his bump act that would prohibit the devices which modify semi-autic weapons to fire bullets more quickly. So there is the... That was... Now, if I'm following the story correctly, a Republican president, Donald Trump, was the one that said that we need to ban bump stocks. Then the Supreme Court... Which is in the majority Republican or conservative leaning They said Oh well bump stocks They can't be uh, Illegal because It doesn't really do anything Bad to a gun To make it kill a bunch of people Um, Even though evidence would suggest Otherwise But Hillary Clinton Claims that Justice Samuel Alito Speaking of the Supreme Court Is scary Why? Because of his Christian faith. The Daily Wire says Hillary Clinton attacked Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito on his Christian faith in a recent interview calling the conservative justice scary. 
and a fanatic for his religious views. The former Secretary of State and 2016 Democratic presidential nominee made the remarks in April during a podcast interview. Yes, podcasts. This is where big news like this is breaking. Yes, big news. Big, big, big news. Okay, it's not that big news. You probably didn't even know about it. So the, it happened on a, the dem, a democracy docket is what it's called. So that's that little bit. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcast Valley. Look who's here. Hello, Michael Myers. It's Madame Rudebega. I love talking to you. And I have been doing it for eons. Oh. You know, speaking of eons, why doesn't Elon Musk just rename himself Eon? He's renamed Twitter. He named his kid with Grimes some weird thing. He should just rename himself Eon. Because that's what he... he, it's, It's very futuristic and interesting. You know what? I was scouted. I've been scouted for a playlist playment, placement. Mike is awesome. Um, Thank you, Rob. Hey, Rob, I don't have any of your news on my podcast today. I often grab a lot of news that he talks about, but not today. Sorry, Rob. But I was told by Spotify that they are li- delighted to inform me that I have been scouted for a playlist placement. It says, your exceptional taste in music and our expertise... In curating the perfect playlist has brought you to our attention and we are excited to feature you. What does this mean for you? A curator has discovered your music and scouted it for their playlist called Just Hits with a reach of 8,000, 800,000 monthly listeners approximately. So it says, please message the curator to confirm your interest in the placement within the next 36 hours. Oops. I think we're at 360 hours at this point. Uh Uh-oh. The playlist curator is waiting for you. DM him here. And I didn't DM DM him. DM. That's direct message, by the way, if you didn't know. It doesn't mean Dungeon Master, which that throws everybody, doesn't it? And then I, I can also direct message them on Instagram, it says. Oh, okay. Well, I would have done that, but then I saw the handle for them. What they go by on their socials Because everybody says that now Hey check me out on my socials Because they want to be all hip Even though they sound like idiots But their social media on Instagram Their handle is what it is Is at titan underscore digital underscore marketing So basically they're trying to sell me something And I ain't gonna buy it Not gonna buy it Madam Rita Vega Michael Matthews, I was a president. I was president a long time ago, so that's not very current. That little bit of humor you're doing, Mike Matthews. Oh, thanks for pointing that out and criticizing me. Do you like to criticize me? Yes. Do you like Joe Jackson? Yes. Do you like Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson? No. Good. We're talking about the other Joe Jackson, the British singer who's amazing. Plays the piano, can do ska. His lyrics were awesome And actually quite a libertarian You know the only reason why I know about the nanny state Was because I heard Joe Jackson talk once And I was like hey that kind of makes sense The nanny state Look who else is here Hello Dave Mike this is Valentino The breaking attention And this is Bison Bentley Do it Mike we was listening to the last podcast called Cool D. Yeah, it was cool. Do you know that? Oh, yeah, and I had the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud. You can still vote on those songs. You can still call me and tell me which one you liked best. Here's the phone number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway hotline. Area code 510-228-4640. But, like, no pressure. No pressure at all. You know, you don't have to if you don't want to. You can just, you know, let it ride and... Forget about anything we covered. Forget there's a Wookiee right behind you. Forget any of any of that. But if you would like to find out all things Mike's Daily Podcast, here we go now to the mainframe and hear all that info from A Frame. Gracias. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at 
mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.